often hailed as the gaming rom or the king of roms and stuff like that uh, that might not be exactly true because there are a lot of roms which are better than corvus os and uh, there are a lot which aren't so we are talking about the poco x3 pro getting the latest version of corvus os it is called el dorado for some reason and it is based on android 13 it was released on the 5th of october i just saw that today and i installed it i've been playing around with it since the last two to three hours this is not definitely a review this is a first look at this wonderful rom we have the benchmarks and quite a lot of interesting things to talk about so don't forget to subscribe to phone Ops because we make such amazing content every single day on different devices and before we get into the details well hello awesome people welcome to phone Ops. my name is kalash Let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We have Corvus OS version T5.0, El Dorado Android 13, 5th October. And uh, yeah, initial build screenshots is all they have. They don't really have a change log. So we're going to increase the brightness a little bit. Now, sometimes I hate this and sometimes I like this. What I'm coming at is getting a black uh, quick tiles on top of a white theme. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but it looks good on this particular ROM with this particular device. Now, of course, this is a POCO X3 Pro, which comes with a Snapdragon 860, gives you amazing gaming performance at a very, very tight budget. And for those of y'all whose devices have not died yet, it's worth keeping the phone. Anyways, if we talk about the home screen, it's very, very plain, standard Android 13 sort of a look going on over here. If you go to wallpaper in style, you do have, oh, you don't even have themed icons and uh, very few wallpapers over here. Okay, so in styles and wallpapers, uh, they've kept quite a few options, which I think is a good thing, set wallpaper. So Corvus have baked a completely different UI over here. A lot of elements are different compared to Android 12 and it's not exactly how Android 13 would be. Monet is definitely working and doing a great job. So that's a good thing to see. And on this black background, this pinkish look looks pretty decent as well. I do miss themed icons, but uh, till the time Google implements them completely, it's okay if we leave it out. So, you know, because say seven icons would look themed and one odd YouTube studio icon would look unthemed. That looks weird. Anyways, we have a ton of quick tiles over here and Corvus OS is known for customization and performance and that's what we are getting at over here. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of custom tiles over here. Soon I'm making a video on which one by one I will start describing the customizations of each ROM, especially ROMs which have a lot of customization like Dirkfest, Dot OS, Ancient OS and even Corvus OS. So hit this video with a like if you want to see that series and let me know in the comment section. Now, if we talk about widgets, you have standard Android 13 widgets going on over here, nothing new. And in home settings, you have a version of quick step launcher. I don't know why that closed there, right? So not much customizations available over here and we have a force close. Anyways, first build, right? So you can excuse them. You do get Google camera go, which does not support multiple lenses. So yeah, you will have to install a G cam of your choice. And if we actually see here, you have active apps that is missing at the bottom. So if you go to settings and see this busy user interface going on, I'm telling you busy is because the standard Android settings are laid out at one side and the Corvus settings are laid out at the other. Now that's how Corvus has been since Android 12, which I think is a good opinion or a good option to have. And they have this, uh, yeah, the 12 version looked better to me. Anyways, so if you go to about phone and uh, you see what all is going on here, let's click on Android version that is Android 13. Now security update is 5th August over here, not even September or August, September, October. Yeah, it's a little weird. You do have SE Linux enforcing and uh, with the latest update, why do we have such an old security patch? Probably someone from the Corvus team can inform me. Now in display, you don't really have a lot of options over here because this is an initial build and a lot of things are changing, but we'll definitely have an in-depth look at the Corvus settings, right? So the moment you dive into Corvus settings, you have theming over here, which is blank. So maybe they will add it in a later stage. You have icon manager over here. You do have tap to sleep, 4G icon, set mobile type icon, roaming indicator, quick settings. You just have the brightness slider, enable, disable, some lock screen customization. Battery is once again blank and notification blank and buttons and nav bar not much and miscellaneous is blank as well. 
So this is a very, very raw version of Corbis wherein they've just released it for the sake of it. They've not added a lot of customization, but if you go to options like, say you go to battery over here, you will see that you do have thermal profiles and I really hope they come up with a better kernel which performs much, much better than it is doing now because we want Corvus for gaming experience, right? If if that is a rumor that Corvus is good for gaming and that is the impression that people have now, let it be a good gaming ROM is what I'm trying to say here. Even if you say go to apps over here, you will not find a gaming space. So, you know, let's actually go to say system and gestures basic options available so not many things are included in this rom and that is the reason this is a first look and not a complete review right now if you go to the play store and you go to settings you will see that device is certified wideline l1 is present safety net is passing so on all those aspects you are fine you can still use it as a daily calling wi-fi calling and texting and internet connectivity all those things are working okay as well now let's quickly talk about benchmark numbers so and to do over here okay so not a very very high score 578 594 the temperature did increase by 7.5 degrees celsius that means the kernel is trying to push the phone really really hard and the battery dropped by five percent now if we then go to say geek bench over here let's see what single core and multi-core score we get i'm pretty impressed with the initial results here so you do get 762 single core and 2491 multi-core so that's pretty decent as far as you know gaming experience is concerned if you then move on to things like google photos for you know the screenshot of cpu throttling let's see what we have in store here first let's check if we have unlimited storage available well you do so let's go here and 89 percent throttling 170 392 average score so it's green across the board and more than 15 minutes if you're gonna game it's gonna throttle a little bit so a few android 13 features are missing the ui is more like android 12 but there are no major bugs like we had in the 11x for derp fest that should stop you from using this rom but there are a lot of custom roms already available like project elixir and a few other which have a lot of customizations that are pretty decent for daily usage as well now let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a gaming review of this remember this is an early build that is the reason i've not done it yet but gaming reviews are definitely coming back and so are a new form of videos wherein i'll be vlogging my experience with these different custom roms as i go through my day and life let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video see you in the next one keep smiling take care goodbye